Hey, my name is Andy Havens, and I am an adjunct professor of marketing. Um, and um, I've got to put a bunch of my slides online with video this semester because of uh, freaking COVID. And um, I wanted to find out the easiest way to combine video and audio uh, with slides. And I figured out how to do it for myself. So I'm going to share how to do it uh, with you guys. Now, I only teach one class a week, but uh, I've got about 10 years worth of slides uh, uh, built up for my class that I like to share. Uh, but now, because of doing asynchronous um, uh, uh, video classes, doing it all offline, uh, again, because of freaking COVID, um, I got to put all those online. And I could just put the slides online or I could just add audio, but uh, I do think video adds something to it. And um, I've got some experience doing video myself, and so I've got some fancy-dancy software to do video, but that involves figuring out how to dice in a bunch of video stuff and how to lay in individual slides. And um, you can do it in a fancy way that takes a bunch of time, but I don't like doing that. And there are some hacks I've learned over the years um, in how to force PowerPoint to take a bunch of individual videos and um, string them together using PowerPoint and your camera video. So this is really just how to take PowerPoint and videos from your uh, from your phone and uh, put them all together in PowerPoint and create one longer video uh, for your lecture. You can see here we're doing uh, a full screen video. Um, basically, you can do full screen video, you can do audio, which we did on the first slide here, or in the second slide you can see we did picture in picture. And all we're really going to be doing is tricking PowerPoint um, into thinking that your video is, uh, is an animation, and then putting it all together and, uh, and exporting uh, one long video from PowerPoint. So um, here we go. Before we get started, though, I would like to mention that this helpful tutorial is sponsored by the Sideways uh, Urban Fantasy series, which is something that I wrote uh, when I wasn't doing my day gig or doing my once a week um, adjunct uh, teaching job. So uh, if you like the video, if the tutorial was helpful, if it helps you save some time uh, on converting your uh, classes uh, due to freaking COVID uh, over to uh, doing video uh, PowerPoint stuff, uh, if it was helpful, then uh, do me a favor and check out www.thesideways.com. Um, sh show me some link love. Um, if you like a good urban fantasy series, uh, give it a shot. You can read the first book for free uh, on that website. You can also listen to the entire first book uh, for free as an audio book um, on iTunes as a podcast. So there you go. Um, some um, uh, absolutely bald-faced commerce there. And away we go with the tutorial. Something to keep in mind is that these instructions are all for Windows. Um, if you have a Mac, I don't know if it would work similarly. Um, that's up to you. Uh, I'm not really much of a, of a Mac expert. Um, I assume you have some version of PowerPoint uh, that can export to video. If you've got an older version of PowerPoint, I don't know. If you go to File, Export, and there's no Create a Video option, this process will not work. So what I suggest you do first is get your slide deck completely done. And if you want to plan a spot on the screen for where your picture and picture videos will fit, that's a good idea. Leave a like a little spot in the upper right-hand corner. Also, you want to leave a blank slide for if you're going to add a full screen video in there. Uh, and also, um, if you're going to have a slide where you're just going to be having audio, leave yourself a note in the comments or something. Uh, what you want to do is record a separate video for each slide. Um, then that, and also keep in mind if you want it to just be audio, um, whether it's going to be a full video or picture in picture. For example, um, I'm not uh, making good eye contact with the camera for this slide since I know that this is going to be audio and you're not going to see anything. Uh, when you're all done, transfer the videos to your computer um, and then open up your deck in PowerPoint. So you've moved all of the videos for every slide you're going to do this for into uh, onto your computer. Um, and you're going to need to have a, uh, a video for each slide. So for each slide then, once you've got your PowerPoint open, you want to go to the menu, and you want to do insert video and video on my PC. And a video box will appear on your slide, and then you want to size it to either picture in picture size, that you can make it smaller and bigger to fit it there in your upper right hand corner. You make it the placement you want, you can make it full screen, or you can make it really small and put it off the screen entirely if you want to use it for audio. It does not matter. The rest of the instructions are exactly the same. Now for every single video, each and every video, you need to do the following or this will not work. Click on the video so the video is selected. And then up in the top when you click on the video you will see a menu option that is not available unless you're clicking on a video that shows you video tools. And one of those says playback. So video tool playback, you want to select the option for start automatically. That means the slide, the, vid, the video will play automatically when you start the slide. You also then want to click on the video and then make sure it's still selected and go to the animations menu 
and then choose Start After Previous. And that's the option in the upper right-hand corner. The Animations menu is usually done to put in those absolutely unnecessary animations that we like to do to make things appear like a star wipe, or they flip in from the side, or they blur in, or whatever. We're not doing that here. Just make sure you select the video, go to the Animations menu, and do Start After Previous. You have to do the, both of those things for every single video, or this will not work. When you've done that for all of your animations, then go back to the first slide. Go to the Transitions menu, and under the Advanced Slide option, deselect on mouse click, choose After, and you leave it set to 0.00, .00 meaning after 0 seconds, and click Apply to All. And then go to File, Export, and Create a Video. Now choose the size of the video you want. I suggest HD. Full HD and Ultra are overkill for most academic PowerPoints. If we are honest with ourselves, PowerPoint is overkill for most of our academic PowerPoints. Make sure to select Use Recorded Timings and Narrations. If this option isn't available, it means you skipped one of the star thingy steps from the previous slide. You have to go back and check. Again, remember, every single one of your animations has to be selected that way, and you also have to have done that transitions thing. Also note, you have to have a video on every slide for this to work. The, you're, you're tricking PowerPoint into thinking that every single animation is, is, or every single video is an animation that will advance the slide as you go on, as you go down. Um, you choose a file name then after you've said to export the video and you wait. This can take some time. There is a status bar. If it's a very long lecture, like an hour, it can take a very long time. Go have a sandwich. And PowerPoint can lock up if you have 30 or 50 videos in there. I really recommend, especially if you're working on an older machine, that you break up your lecture into 20 to 30 minute uh, chunks if possible. Uh, this is pretty easy to do since you're going to have one video for each slide. If you try to export your final video and PowerPoint keeps locking up, you know, just save one as a master, delete half of it, then do, and then save it as the first half, go back up in the master, delete the second half, uh, or delete the first half, you know what I mean. Say, just, just do it in chunks if, if it keeps locking up. That's really it. If you're fine with, with verbal instructions, with printed instructions, try that. Go back and, and freeze the video at those last three slides and do it again. Here are some screen caps for people who are visual learners. You can see there the insert video option. Uh, you can see what it's like to insert a full screen there in PowerPoint. When it drops in, usually that's the way it happens. And I've circled there the little the little thing in the upper right-hand corner, that little select thing that lets you make the video smaller and, and larger. You can see what it looks like if you size it down for picture in picture. So you can make it smaller and have other stuff on the screen. And you can also see for audio only, what you want to do is make sure that it's all the way off the screen so that when it plays, uh, you don't see your, your video at all. It's going to play, the video will be there, but you won't see it, so you just get the audio. Magic tricks for everyone in your class. Invisible video. Some more screen caps. Um, you can see here, um, this is how you uh, insert uh, the video again. And then once the video has been inserted, uh, when you've clicked on it uh, and you've, you've selected it again, you can see the selection rectangle there with the little dots on it. You want to uh, click on uh, Start. Uh, the the playback there you can see you selected the video playback and you want to do it start automatically that's important that's one of the two things you absolutely have to do the second thing you absolutely have to do for every video is as well it's still selected again so you make sure you've got those little dots selected for the video you have to go to the animations uh, thing at the top of the screen the animations menu and then uh, click on over on the right hand side start after previous that's all you got to do there. And then at the end, when you're finished with all of them, go back to the first slide, go to the Transitions menu, and over on the right-hand side, Transition, not on mouse click. You have to deselect mouse click and click on After and just leave it at 00. zero. That's the default. And then click on Apply to All. And here's the last screen cap. When you do File Export, that's what you're looking for there, the thing that says Create a Video. Like I said, I suggest HD 720, use Recorded Timings, and then just click on Create a Video. So this is really just all you're doing is you're putting a video on every screen. You're telling PowerPoint that it's that the video counts as an animation. You're kind of tricking PowerPoint into thinking that, that, that each of your videos is an animation. And you're telling the animation to play automatically when the slide starts. And then when you go back and do that transition thing, you're telling PowerPoint, okay, the transitions should be not on a mouse click, which is how we normally make our PowerPoints go forward when we're doing it in front of a live audience. But we're saying to happen automatically after 
zero seconds. So as long as all of those things are set up, when you do the export to a video of the whole thing, what it's what it's what it, what you're telling PowerPoint to do is play this video for this for this slide on slide one, and then when you're done, automatically advance after zero seconds, and then that next video is all set to run with automatically what you set for that animation, which it will do till it's over, and then the next one goes on the next one, the next one, the next one. And when you link all those together, you're creating essentially a master video based on stringing those videos together where you've put them on each of the slides, whether it's a full screen video like this one, or the audio off to the side or picture in picture. Um, hopefully that all makes sense from a theory standpoint, the theory of PowerPoint. Ugh. So that's really it for me. Um, all I can say is, as from one teacher to another, um, I know I'm only doing it once a week, and I really like uh, being in front of students. It's really the only reason I kept my hand in teaching is because I like the classroom work and not being able to do it for most of last semester and, and, and certainly not for all of next semester and maybe even the semester after is really depressing. I know that. And the extra work of putting stuff online is a giant pain in the ass. And so from one teacher to another, all I got to say is, man, keep up the good work. And also, your students right now need you to be upbeat. Everything you're going through, they're going through, plus the fact that um, they're young and uh, we're not. So um, uh, we've got each other. You've got colleagues. You've got um, uh, you've you've got a support structure. Um, bitch to each other. Don't don't bitch to the students. Um, don't you know? Don't complain about how hard it is to put this stuff online. Don't complain about the situation. Um, let's keep that to ourselves. Um, the one thing we can teach them in sort of a meta pedagogy, oh, did I say that in a video? Um, resiliency, creativity, and patience. We're going to make it through this. Um, take care of yourself. Do what you got to do. Um, and then the other thing I'm, I'm trying to do for myself is I'm trying to imagine life after COVID. We're going to get through this. And after we get all past this, I want to be able to look back and say, I was there for my students. I was there for my friends. I was there for my colleagues. And I did what I had to do, and I did it in a way that I'm proud of once we get through all of this. So be there for your students, um, do what you got to do, and once again, hey, check out the Sideways series. It is an awesome urban fantasy series, strong female protagonist, um, no romance whatsoever. It's got an extended metaphor about the value of um, uh, uh, pluralism. So again, it's a, it's, it's a great series for our time. So share that um, with your friends, and I hope this was helpful to you. And um, keep up the good work. Um, that's it. Take care.